Review sites dubbed this backpack the most versatile workhorse of lightweight backpacks. And it was until it wasn't. This brings us to the problem with review sites like Outdoor Gear Lab or Backpacker Magazine. But first, let's talk about what makes this backpack great and ultimately why it failed. I bought the Granite Gear Blaze 60 back in 2020 because I was looking for something lightweight for my longer backpacking trips, yet heavy duty enough to fit all my filming gear. I needed something that was versatile and most of all, sexy. What really pushed me to buy the Blaze 60 was this awesome review from Outdoor Gear Lab, a site I trust when it comes to gear reviews. So I pulled the $300 trigger and immediately loved it. This backpack is lightweight, only being three pounds, which is considerably lighter than most of his competition. Backpacks need to be lightweight, especially for long distance packing. But where the blaze shines, is its weight to comfort ratio. For example, let's look at my first backpack, the REI Flash, which at the time was one of the lightest packs on the market, only being two pounds, 12 ounces. Generally, lightweight packs feel pretty bad at heavy loads. And I can tell you the Flash physically hurt my shoulders when it weighed anywhere near 27 pounds. The Granite Gear Blaze does not have this problem. It eats up any weight up to 50 pounds. And even at 50 pounds, it never hurt. It only felt heavy. Its shoulder straps and hip belt are thick. But I've tried heavier packs with thicker straps that don't feel as good as the Blaze. I honestly don't know how Granite Gear did it. I was very impressed. And that alone made this pack worth it. It has a front pocket that's stretchy enough to put a jacket, but not big enough to put more robust items. I love the extra large hip pockets, which are big enough to fit my camera lenses or phone. And I gotta mention how cool this backpack looks. It definitely has that it factor. Everyone I know has a Gregory or an Osprey backpack, so I wanted to branch out with something that sticks out. The checkerboard pattern with all the blacks makes this pack a head turner. Another cool feature is the brain can be turned into a fanny pack, which I thought would be something cool to go around and hike after a day of backpacking. Unfortunately, the versatility and adjustability for what the Blaze is known for is what I believe led to its failure. The fanny pack I thought would make a cool day pack is so annoying to assemble. On top of that, there isn't a place to put a water bottle, and the lid isn't large enough to fit my two liter bottle, so I never use this function, not even once. The Blaze fabric is said to be tear resistant, but I didn't find that the case. Here you can see some clear rips. I have a few rips on the stretchy fabric in the front as well. Although I found these water bottle pockets spacious, I had difficulty reaching for my water while the pack was on. And since I'm on a roll, the top zipper of the brain broke right before a trip. So I had to super glue it and sew it back together while I was still in the car. Now by far the worst design choice is what they call the air current frame. So it's a plastic plate with holes in it. And at the end of each strap, you have this metal rivet. I don't know what else to call this, so I'm gonna call it a rivet that you can adjust to fit your torso length. The adjustability aspect is a cool idea, but think about it. What in the world would make it a good idea putting a metal rivet on plastic? I mean, this is where all the weight is gonna be for this pack. So this plastic has to be heavy duty to absorb whatever load these metal rivets are gonna to give to it. So a year into using this pack, I noticed a squeaking noise. In further inspection, I found that there were two cracks on each strap where the plastic meets the metal. I didn't really think that it was gonna be that big of an issue until this happened. A solid break. In the beginning of my trip, the crappy thing is I couldn't even adjust the other strap. I didn't know it at the time, but it was because I had a full pack. It's easy to adjust these straps when the pack is empty, but not when it's full, which is a poor design. So the rest of that backpacking trip, I hiked with this strap higher and this strap lower. And that was so annoying. You can see I could fit basically my whole hand in this crack and it goes all the way down. And unfortunately now the backpack is pretty much useless. To be fair, I waited three years to make this review. So some of these issues can be justified as normal wear and tear, but I think there's nothing normal about the air current frame breaking. This brings me to the problem with review sites. Most of them seem to focus on immediate performance and features, but I never see anything on longevity. The Blaze has been Outdoor Gear Lab's number one backpacking backpack for three years running. And while they updated the review, it seems they primarily compared it to newer gear rather than thoroughly testing its performance through prolonged use. You see, problems with gear are a lot like problems in relationships. There might be red flags in the beginning, but issues don't really manifest until six months down the line. 
Well, how do you fix this? It's simple. You have these sites update their reviews after a few years. And I'm sure the public would love to know what the longevity is for the gear that they are reviewing. And to be clear, this isn't just Outdoor Gear Lab's problem. Many sites do this. I still love Outdoor Gear Lab and I'll continue to use them as a resource in the future. So what's next for me in the backpack? Luckily, Granite Gear has a really good return policy and they'll either send me a full replacement or replacement parts, as long as the repairs are against defects in materials or workmanship under normal recreational use. So I'll send this one back and see if the new one's gonna be any better. To be honest, I'm probably just gonna buy a new backpack. I don't trust the decision they made to put metal on plastic. After use of this backpack, I realized I think I need more than 60 liters to fit all my camera gear and all the things I need to bring on these trips. Which is unfortunate because I kind of do like this backpack and it is really comfortable, but I just don't think it can fit my needs in the future. So what backpack do you recommend I try? I'm open to suggestions. I'll be making an updated backpack video once I hear back from Granite Gear, but I think you're gonna really enjoy this video of my full backpacking gear list. I'm the Backpacking Biologist and thanks for watching.